Just a month before the attack, an unreleased videotape reveals the extent of Eric and Dylan's preparation. This is a reconstruction from reports of the tape's contents. The cameraman is Dylan, the location, Eric's bedroom. Eric reveals dozens of hiding places, containing what amounts to a small armaments factory. How did Eric succeed in concealing such a vast collection of lethal weaponry? The question still remains unanswered. Eric's parents have not spoken publicly since the massacre. Hi, Mom. <laughs> but his play acting at the end of the tape shows that Eric is well aware of his skills in the art of deception. Fifteen months earlier, they'd broken into a van and stolen electrical equipment. They were later arrested on felony charges of criminal trespass and theft. At their course hearing, both were ordered to undergo courses designed to steer juveniles away from crime. After completing his course, Eric seemed contrite. I am happy to say that with the... Eric's private journal tells a different story. Isn't America supposed to be the land of the... Fr Their encounter with the law reveals the existence of a kind of parallel universe. While outwardly apologetic and reformed, Eric and Dylan were now bonded by a shared rage. My wrath from January's incident will... In the middle-class suburban town of Littleton, near Denver, Colorado, a 17-year-old murderous fantasy is beginning to take shape. He and a friend, known as Vodka, or V, intend to commit an act so violent that it will secure their place in history. Sometime in April next year, me and V will... MBK came quick. Everything I see and hear, I relate to MBK somehow. Feels like a goddamn movie sometimes. MBK is Eric and Dylan's code name for the coming massacre. It stands for Natural Born Killers, a movie they both admire. The film tells the story of Mickey and Mallory, two mass murderers with traumatized childhoods who become media celebrities. For Eric and Dylan, the movie seems to represent a kind of redemption, that they, like the fictional characters, are ultimately superior. I know we're gonna have followers, because we're so fucking godlike. I mean, we're not exactly human. We have human bodies, but we've evolved one step above you, fucking human shit. I mean, we actually have fucking self-awareness. Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold planted two 20-pound propane bombs in the cafeteria. Both bombs were set to explode at 11.17, just as the cafeteria reaches the peak of the lunchtime rush. The plan was to kill as many students as possible in the explosions, and to execute survivors. The bomb planting was not caught on the cafeteria surveillance cameras, possibly because of a tape change. Except this day I saw Eric pull it. He had missed two hours of school. I went up to see what was going on. And I called him a few names. And he laughed, called me a few names back. And we made this little interchange where I was cussing him out, basically. What the hell is wrong with you, man? You weren't in third hour. You missed the test. It doesn't matter anymore. Then he looked at me. I, I said, dude, you missed the huge test. Go home.
Okay. There's a lot of theories about why he didn't shoot me. I personally think, because I remember the look on his face, he didn't want to kill me. And I wasn't the only person that let go. Richard Castaldo is on his way out to meet his friend, Rachel Scott. They plan to have lunch just outside the school's west entrance. In their trench coats, Eric and Dylan attract little attention. They've often worn this uniform to school. The attack is now just seconds away. Go, go, go. Inside the school, no one's sure what's going on. Some think it's just a prank by senior students. Dave Sanders realizes it might be much more serious. Neil, I need you in the lunch room urgently. Neil Gardner receives a panicked radio message from inside the school, but he thinks at first that it might be no more than an accident on the school grounds. shooting outside. I want you quiet. I want you to all make your way outside this way only. Not go out to the parking lot. As the injured Sean Graves makes an attempt to reach safety inside the cafeteria, he's aware of one of the gunmen coming up behind him. He plays dead. to find the cafeteria apparently empty. There are no easy targets. This is what we always wanted to do. This is awesome. Let's do it. First police officer on the scene. Andy, get Actually, I thought it was just some, like, random person that came in off the street and, you know, just like some crazy maniac or something. But it didn't even, like, click at, at that time that it could have been a student because you know, I didn't think anyone at Columbine would, like, start shooting people.
Make sure the science labs are locked. Dave Sanders is still trying to clear the hallways. Five more police units are nearing the school. Dave Sanders is badly injured. The killing spree inside the school is about to begin. I'm not sure. In the next seven minutes, Eric and Dylan will carry out the most brutal part of their assault on the school. The attack on the 56 students and staff hiding in the library. Get up! Everybody with white hats, stand up! This is for all the shit you've given us for the past four years! Fine, I'll start shooting anyway! After they walked about halfway through into the library was when they came into my view. And then I could see that it was actually people that I knew, students. You know, it was just these two people that I thought were just ordinary, regular kids who were suddenly like blowing things up and shooting. And I was like, what are they doing? Let's go kill some cops. gonna die. We're gonna blow up the school anyway. You're welcome. Red! There's a nigger over here. <coughs> Come on. And then I, I, I heard some more banging, you know, gunshots. I believe I just did that. Cool. Listen up, you fucking scared pieces of shit. This school is fucking dead. I'm in the back. I got some smoke coming from the building. Uh, I'm over here with uh, the unit. Dylan, what are you doing? I'm oh, just killing people. 
Oh. Are you gonna kill me? No, man, just get out of here. Just run. Run. Run! The seven minute killing spree in the library comes to a sudden end just before 11.36. Evan Todd. Even though Dylan now confronts one of the school's athletes, the injured Evan Todd, he threatens and abuses, but doesn't kill. Do you want to go to the commons? I have one more thing to do. He now seems reduced to a gesture of repressed rage. The phone, and she was looking outside the door, trying to see what was going on. She saw the shooters come down the hall. They reloaded their firearms right there in front of our classroom. Door had me window in it and so they could look right in. I remember just jumping away. Eric and Dylan's movements through the school now seem directionless. Eric's secret journals and video recordings leave the clear impression of a disturbed mind filled with grandiose and destructive schemes. Dylan, however, is a mystery. Would Dylan be a part of it? I couldn't imagine it. But could he be caught up in it in some way? Yes. Eric tries to detonate one of the 20 pound propane bombs in the cafeteria. It is perhaps his first suicide bid during the attack. I did realize it was coming from the medication. And so did the doctors. They took him off the medication. But all he got in exchange was a different brand name. He got Luvox. At Eric Harris's autopsy, therapeutic quantities of Luvox were discovered in his bloodstream. Dylan Klebold's autopsy report found no traces of drugs. Was Eric's medication one further element in the Columbine tragedy? Or was it an underlying psychiatric condition that the drugs were supposed to treat? One thing is certain. When Eric's father heard of the shooting, he immediately thought it could be his son. As midday approaches, Eric and Dylan make their final journey back towards the library. A six-man police SWAT team is about to enter the school, but from an entrance at the far end of the building. The police will sweep through the school, room by room, and will reach the library, last of all, almost three and a half hours later. Since Columbine, the local police have reviewed their tactics on what they call imminent threats. Officers responding to shooting incidents are now trained to intervene. Eric and Dylan arrive back at the library door. The terrible sights of death are shrouded in thick smoke. They will make one last near-suicidal gesture before ending their lives just a few meters from many of their victims.